Yeah, my name's Jesse. Uh, I'm from Canva. I'm here to talk to you about Nix and Bazel, uh, and in particular, why Bazel works better without Nix. So first of all, these two build systems, on the surface, they seem pretty similar. They both have their own configuration language. They both have their own package manager, although Nix's is, is, is quite a lot larger, lot larger. They both have their own strategies for remote execution. They both have their own strategies for building container images containing all of your runtime dependencies. They also both have strategies for building uh, some type of archive that contains all of your transitive dependencies and move, copying that between systems. But the really important difference between these build systems is the time at which your runtime, the path to your runtime dependencies is determined. So in Nix, the path to your runtime dependencies is, deter is determined at build time, and in Bazel it's determined at runtime. So for example, if you have two shell scripts, A and B, and B calls into A, so there's a dependency between them. In Nix, the way you might do this is like this, with each of these as their own derivation, and the dependency from B to A is expressed with this little uh, string interpolation syntax. Uh, but what's, what's important is that while this Nix expression is being evaluated, uh, this string interpolation expands out to the full absolute path of that derivation or source file. So before the build has even started executing, the absolute path to everything has already been determined. If we build and run this, it works fine. But if we have a look at the contents, we again see these embedded absolute paths, uh, including even the path to, to bash. Contrast that with how Bazel works. We could have a pair of SH binary targets. Uh, and, but in Bazel, in order to find a runtime dependency, you need to use uh, the run files library. And importantly, that determines the path to your dependency at runtime using these environment variables and the first program argument. If we build and run this, it works fine. Uh, and if we look inside the run files, we can see that B can find A because it's included in the, in the run files tree. So this makes Nix quite a stark, uh, it gives it quite a stark difference between other, with other package repositories that we bring into our Bazel build. Uh, from NPM, Maven, Go packages, um, crates for Rust or, or Python packages, they all have some sort of strategy to bring your, the transitive closure of your runtime dependencies into the run files along with a launcher, or to completely statically link them so they're embedded in the final binary. Uh, but this doesn't work with Nix because with Nix, the, your dependencies have to be inside of the Nix store rather than inside of your run files tree. So for an example of uh, issues that this can cause, here's a simple example pulling in the WAF2 package from, from Nix via rules Nix packages. And here's a pair of targets that each depend on the WAF2 compressed binary inside of uh, WAF2 from Nix, uh, a test target and a main target. The test just finds WAF2 compressed using the run files library and runs it on a test file. The main target does the same but forwards the first program argument. If we run the test locally, it works fine. If we build the main target and run that locally, it also works fine. But what if we use remote execution? Here we're passing dash dash config equals entflow to run the build on our remote execution cluster, but we get this mysterious error. No such file or directory when we run WAF2 compress. If we run file on the WAF2 compress binary inside of the run files tree, we can see why. It's because the interpreter is set to the dynamic linker inside of the Nix store rather than at the standard path. But much more than that, if we run object dump on the binary, we can see that there's more embedded Nix store paths inside of the binary uh, for other runtime dependencies in the run path field. What if we build a container instead? Here's some targets to build and load a container. If we docker run that uh, with a bind mount to run it on a local file, we get the same error again because those, that Nix store isn't populated inside of the container image. If we just use the package tar rule, to build, a, build the main target with all of its run files wrapped up in a tarball, copy that to a different server, extract it and run it, we get the same error again. No such file or directory because the interpreter doesn't exist on this system. So what can we do to fix this? One option would be to build a base image with Nix using uh, packages.docker tools and fill in the Nix store with all of the derivations that you're going to need at runtime. 
This can work, but it's quite fragile because all of these Nix packages package repos, the base images that you're using for remote execution, and the uh, base images that you're using for your containers to distribute them, they can fall out of sync very easily. Another option is to share the Nix store between your RBE client and server so that when the Nix store is populated on client, it's also available on the server. Uh, this is a, adds a bit of complexity to your build infrastructure, and it can make it difficult to support remote builds from different client environments and different remote execution clusters. The option that we uh, opted for was actually to use Bazel without Nix, and this supports all three of our use cases. The big downside is that you have to, re you have to everything you're getting from Nix has to come from some other package manager, and that means that potentially you have to wrap or rewrite some external builds with Bazel. But there's a big payoff. You end up with a single execution system that you need to secure, scale, and maintain, and your build infrastructure ends up being much simpler overall. So for an example of what this looks like, continuing with the previous example, WAF2 doesn't have a Bazel build available upstream, uh, but it's pretty easy to write one, and here's an example. We can pull that it through with HTTP archive, passing in our build file, and the transitive dependency Brotly is also available in the Bazel central registry, so we can pull that in the uh, module.bazel file as well. And this way, all three of our use cases work. We can run our test remotely, we can wrap it in a in a Docker image and run that, and we can also bundle it up into a tarball, copy it to a different system and run it there, and it all works fine. Now, this lack of relocatability uh, with Nix builds due to the embedded absolute uh, Nix store pass isn't the only issue we've had with integrating Nix and Bazel. The evaluation of Nix expressions itself can actually be quite slow, uh, and importantly, it starts from the start every time one of these Nix packages package repos needs to refetch. And that happens any time one of the Nix files changes or any of the source files that are used in the derivations uh, and passed into the repository rule. This is a big difference to Starlock evaluation in Bazel, which is incremental and is reused between invocations, uh, provided you don't uh, drop your analysis cache. Um, the evaluation of the Nix of Nix expressions is also repeated between the Nix packages, package repositories uh, as well. So it's a bit inefficient in that way also. Uh, when we were building Docker images containing the pre-populated Nix store, uh, we found that, that just building a Docker image with the, with the appropriate Nix store wasn't sufficient because we also have non-Nix binaries involved in our Bazel build, ones that expect a standard FHS file system layout from a standard Linux distribution instead of what is effectively Nix OS. So we have to run these extra commands on top to set up an FHS file system layout and also configure the dynamic linker so that our non-Nix binaries can find their runtime de dependencies through the dynamic linker. So this is what it looks like before and after. With Nix no longer involved, Bazel takes on a much larger share of the build workload. Um, but there is a slightly increased dependency on the platform outside of Bazel because some things aren't so easy or convenient to bring into the Bazel build hermetically. For example, bash, uh, core utils, some command line utilities, uh, the dynamic linker, um, even a C++ toolchain uh, comes from the platform in our build. An alternative would have been to, instead of wrapping Nix with Bazel using rules Nix packages, instead wrap Bazel with Nix. There is actually a derivation builder inside of Nix packages to do this called build Bazel package, and that does get used to build derivations that are Bazel builds. So that does work. And in this scenario, rather than using rules Docker, rules OCI, or rules package, or using Bazel's remote execution, or Bazel's uh, remote caching, you would use the Nix equivalents of these. This would work, but because Nix is now in the driver's seat and your entire Bazel build is now a single Nix derivation, you don't get that nice granular caching and distribution of your Bazel actions. So in summary, what we found is while Nix and Bazel have very similar goals, uh, they're really incompatible designs. They have a kind of impedance mismatch in where they determine their runtime dependencies to be. We originally used rules Nix packages to provide access to a very large package repository, but we found it wasn't providing enough value to offset the, the limitations that it imposed on our Bazel build. And migrating dependencies away from Nix 
uh, and pulling them in through some other package manager or wrapping or rewriting third-party builds in Bazel. Uh, we did find that to be easier than we expected, generally speaking. Uh, but, and the big payoff is that we ended up with a single distributed build system that we need to secure, scale, and maintain. Um, and it, the simplicity also better empowers uh, people from outside the build system, uh, the build team, to self-serve their own changes as well, uh, instead of dealing, dealing with two uh, very complicated build systems. That's it. Thank you very much.